Hi everyone, welcome to this live drafting tutorial for a 1950s statement collar. Collar very much inspired by Givenchy. And I completely messed up the countdown, I realized. So all of you who were here at lunchtime, I apologize. Hopefully some of you will get the YouTube notification that I'm live and still be able to join me. And I'm going to wait a few minutes. So while we're waiting, I'm Charlotta. This is the School of Pattern Cutting. And today I'm going to show you in 10 minutes how to draft a 1950s statement collar. And as some of you might already know, I'm really passionate about helping you learn how to draft your own clothes. And I love vintage stuff. Um, so at lunchtime today, we already looked on Instagram on how this collar actually looks like and the blouse. I'm going to show you an image now. And today I'm going to show you how to actually draft it. So it's this 1950s sort of pointy, quite shawl collar inspired um, styles. You can see pointy and it's very heavily inspired by this really beautiful Givenchy Erica blouse um, from around the same time has to be um, but while the, the classic Givenchy has a short collar this one has this um, detached collar so it's quite interesting oh and Sharon hello yes yeah, sorry I've I have no idea what I've done Sharon, Sharon is saying I was just wondering about the time I thought I had, had it scheduled properly, but then I just suddenly realized, oh, my friend's slightly wrong. So I apologize to all of you. Um, but Sharon, you probably know me by now, but it's always 8 p.m. UK time for YouTube. Um, and I'm hoping my voice won't go. I've just um, been chatting too much all day. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna wait another minute to this um, quite a few of you watching. So let's see who joins. Oh, hello, Amaris. Um, lovely to see. I think I saw you last time as well, didn't I? Um, so I'm glad you made it despite my time um, mix up. So we might get some very exclusive drafting today. And what I'm probably gonna do is, um, if the tutorial is too long, I'm gonna chop off the Q&A in a few weeks time. Um, so people don't get put off by a 14 minute video saying 10 minutes drafting tutorial. Um, but let's, I think that's everybody who is here. If you just joined, please feel free to join me in the chat and come and say hello. Otherwise, let's have a look at this really beautiful 1950s blouse. I'm gonna get my analysis out in lunchtime. And you can rewatch it, it's on my Instagram channel now. But can you see I've, I drew both the blouses and the one I'm going to today, do today is this one, which is detached. So you can actually have be a bit more creative with what sort of shape you want. Um, and the other one is the Givenchy, which is, which might be interesting for Sharon because you're on the Patreon, which is either a normal short collar or it's sort of a short, collar version of a Cooper collar just to really confuse you but you can also use your Cooper collar tutorial for this one this one I'm going to do today is actually more straight one. Oh, and um, Mrs Clark has joined me from the Barbados how wonderful lovely to see you um, and I bet you haven't got a cold because it probably isn't as freezing where you are that's lovely to see you and is it, I think it's your first time, Mrs. I don't recognize, recognize your name, Mrs. Clark. So I think it's your first time. So welcome. I'm going to try to get my voice back and draft. So I'm going to go full screen on the table so we can have a look at this color. So let's draft this really beautiful color. And let's see it all. So this pattern, I've only found one place to buy it online. It's called Advanced 6280s. And the only place I've seen, it was something like 60 UK pound. 
so 80, 90 US dollars, which is pretty expensive. So you can buy a blouse for that price. And so I thought i will show you how to draft bits of it when you can put it all together. Oh, and it's lovely to have you, Miss Clark. I'm glad you made it. And yeah, thank you anybody who's watching despite me getting the timing wrong. So as always, with most of our drafting tools, we're going to start with our basic bodice. So I've traced around the front and I've traced around the back because the first thing we're going to do is slightly change our neckline. So if you look at um, her, your normal your basic bodice neckline is probably higher up. So the first, and you can really see how it's actually quite a wide neck on this red version, which is exactly the same cut I would believe just a different um, fabric and actually on all of them you can see it's a really nice um, neckline and of course the great thing is if you don't put the collar on you have these blouses as well so you can sort of really make a sleeveless blouse or a sleeved blouse so um, so we're going to decide or you want to decide for your own how far you want to go in and when you have to transfer the same amount to your front and back shoulder. So I always measure from my high shoulder point. So I'm going to make it quite wide. I'm um, going in four centimeters. So that's um, an inch and a half. And when I'm transferring the same to the back and if you have a, if you have a center um, a back shoulder dart and um, it will be on the other side still so you can keep that for better shaping which is what is quite sensible if you have it so you can just keep it um if you come very close to it you can actually reshape into the collar but this isn't as close then at the back i'm only going to go i'm going to go as little down my center back line as i can and um, because you can see on the image, it's quite high in the back. And also if you go too low in the back, it really ha um, it really messes up your fitting. So whenever you have a style like that, if you go really low in the back, it really relaxes. And then the shoulders won't fit nicely. So what you're basically doing is by keeping it really high, like really nearly like your basic bodice block high at the center back, it hangs off your back. So that will keep the shape really beautiful because you've seen how clothes, like I'm wearing a coat and such a coat, but that hangs off my neck because it's really tight at the back. So even if it's wider in the front, it will hang beautifully. If you scoop your neck at the back, you really have to have quite a fitted bodice because otherwise your top is going to slide down and up and down and it won't fit. So that's always something to keep in mind. If you want something um, which has a big neck, which isn't fitted overall, it's best to keep your center back really high. Um, but on the other hand, if you're a really beautiful fitted dress or something, um, then you can go low in the back and the front, but you have to have this area quite fitted. And you can see this blouse is sort of semi-fitted, but it hasn't, it's not fully fitted. So for that style, for easier fit, I would keep it higher. Oh, and I just see Janet has joined me. Hello, Janet. Thank you so much for joining me. And no apologies me needed because I completely messed up the shape and the timing of this live stream. So I'm very glad you made it at all um, because I put it up as 1.30 today, which, of course, was several hours ago. So, yes, welcome, Jen. I'm just starting to draft this 1950s collar. So we are going to reshape our neckline. So at the back, I'm just going down half a centimeter to a centimeter. And then I'm using my pattern master. I'm actually going to do a tiny bit of a right angle here. So the run is still correct. And the run is just that if you put your two pattern pieces together, that they fit. And of course, what you can do if you want to have it really curved, you cut it apart and then you lay it together so the high shoulder points are touching
<clears throat> and you pin it together. And now you can see I can draw a really nice neckline in. So I'm gonna start the center front and you can see, you can actually see this has actually got a little bit of a dart, but the bust point is probably here. So it's the crossover is just above my bust point. So not too low, but it's not a very high basic size. So I'm gonna move it to here. And then I'm gonna draw a V-neck up to the point I marked in my high shoulder point. Then I'm gonna draw just a right angle on my center back. And that's gonna help me guide how I want my curve to be. So can you see, I want my curve to go exactly here. So it hits that straight line at 90 degrees to my center back in a really nice smooth curve. And everything is sort of nice and smooth. It, and this will actually be not easier on the full scale because I'm now talking a tiny curve. And this is why some pattern cutters, um, well, actually, if you did work digitally, this is easier. Um, or you can sort of hand sketch it in and then recurve it. So that gives me a sort of a quite nice run. You could even have it slightly less, um, so it stays really fitted. So it might be more like this. Um, and that would be your blue blouse already if you wanted to. But we're going to make our statement collar. Um, so for the statement collar, I'm going to pin everything apart again. Because what I want to do is draw on how I want the collar to roughly look. So from here, it's, it's going up in a triangle. So I'm going to use this as a sort of, um, because on this side, you can really see the sort of angle. It's sort of up here. And it's, it looks like it's the same, the tip is of the same line as the shoulder. So I want my tip to be up from my shoulder point. And then I'm going to just draw a straight line to my center front. But before I do that quickly, I need to put on my button stand. Um, and with stuff like that, it's always important to consider your order. So I've done my neckline, now I need to do my button stand. And I'm doing a basic button stand, which is um, about three centimeters wide. Um, so you're just doing your normal button stand because that will actually show you where you need to draw your point through. So that's always for order. Sometimes you do the button stand less, last, but with a style of collar is connected to it you always need to do your button center first because it changes the, the shape of your bodice block so now i know where it actually is going to end i can draw the outline of my collar at the front and then all i'm going to do for now is just draw a line back to this point so you can see that's really Easy, it's just a triangle, and our pattern piece might end up being a triangle, and we will find out at the end. But when you make your trial, you find out whether that angle is correct. But I will actually do if you're making this is at this stage, cut trace out that piece of paper, a triangle, and um, Work out where it needs to go to the bottom and how it will lay. And then you can already see where this angle is correct, whether it needs to go up or down. And literally on the paper, you can sort of pin it on in your on your t-shirt or whatever you're wearing. And you can work out where that point is correct, whether you need to make it higher or lower or bigger. And that sort of um but they didn't have to sew anything cut out of fabric. This is already like your first 12. Um, and once you've done that, we can trace through it and then we can transfer it to the back and create our back collar. So let's get a piece of paper. So I'm just going to quickly lay it on and trace it through. 
and you can use of course tracing wheel i'm doing it um, on top of it and this is a bit of a weird color because it will have i looked at the original pattern piece and it's literally a detached pattern piece it hasn't got a grown on and um, a facing or anything but i would actually probably attach a facing to it just to make it um neater on the inside um but this is like a really easy just a trap um pattern so they have kept it completely separate so you can sort of just sandwich your bodies in between um but i can show you at the end if you have time how to do that so this is my line i'm actually going to put a notch there because this is a triangle so i don't suddenly want to Use it the wrong way around or something. And normally with a block, you can always tell, oh yeah, that's my bust point, that's my neckline. But with something like that, it becomes very abstract. So we've got our front collar done. And that's basically it. That's how the pattern is. So it's, it is really, really straightforward. But the slightly, not trickier, but um, the slightly, the point where we have to be a bit more careful is our back. Because we sort of want to transfer that same angle to the back. Um, so we've got, we've what we want to end up is a back collar, which basically on the pattern, it goes up like this. So if I, so you might end up doing the same angle exactly. So I'm gonna actually quickly mark on here what the angle is. So I can draw, but on the back, so this is how it looks when it's opened up. But on the back, what we need to do is actually, if you look at it, it's the other way around. So it'll actually go up and then it will join the front like that. So you want it to look like this in the end, but if I actually go the other way around, so it's slightly more complicated. So what I'm actually going to do, this is where you need to do a little bit of experimentation. So I'm going to trace my font over, so I have the length of it. And then I'm actually going to put a this my compass, just mark it as a circle there. So semicircle, so if I can get my needle in, sorry. And we're gonna mark that whole measurement because I'm not a hundred percent I know what sort of shape of pattern piece I want. I basically need another triangle, but one to fit my back neck. So I sort of know how to get there, but it's where I might have to change the angle a bit. So what we're basically going to do is to something which starts from the center back and then we want it to fit at this point and because can you see because i traced a circular line with the same radius as my original any line i draw from this high shoulder point should now be the same length so i can stitch it back again to my Front collar. So it's just like a guideline. I've created a semicircular guideline so I can draw on my collar. But can you see that shape is a rough guide? And then what you would do is just make a trowel just the top of your bodice, the top of your bodice at the front as well. 
and then just a single layer from your collar um, front and back just to see how the shape is because the front we can sort of work out pretty well how it fits here it's a bit more guesswork you can sort of what you could do is like what you say oh i want it exactly the same shape in which case it would be really high up can you see so i've drawn mine how i, what I think it looks like but the other option is to put on a bit more paper So one option is like mine, where you just roughly guess it, but then that might be even more precise, but there will be a little bit of tweaking just because you're fitting it to the neckline. The other option is that you literally say, I need this, I want exactly the same triangle, and I need to keep my high shoulder point there. So what you might do is that you put your front on and you move it until it fits your, it hits your center back. And that way, you will get exactly the same width triangle. But can you see that becomes quite deep here? So what we might do, you could do both and try them out. So you could do one side as that, one side as that to try it out. Because they're just slightly different, but they'll make quite a difference. It's something like that because we are retro engineering. Um, it's a bit of guess it takes. So at the moment, what we're doing is basically, if you were designing your own from a sketch, you would probably just go with this one at the front and then use the red one, which is exactly the same shape. And that would be that would be your design. That's completely fine, and you love it. If you love it, go for it. If you sort of want to copy this style completely, then you would actually think um, it looks too different. It might be too high, the angle might be wrong, it might sort of not lay, because this sort of nearly folds over the back. So what you might do is to start with that, but then if I trace it through, we can actually change the angle at the back a bit if it's too high up, um, and so we can use our normal collar fitting techniques, but apply to these strange triangle shapes. So what I'm going to do again is put a notch line on already, already, and then I'm going to trace it through, and then I'm going to show you where you might want to um, tweak it a bit. So this collar is a bit like the statement. Um, um, the sort of different shirt collars I've been showing you this month on Patreon, where you always drafting is actually quite straightforward. And it's more about um, the fit because we're talking about the neckline. So like a few, like a centimeter more on the outer edge or centimeter less can really mean it will fit completely different on the neckline. Does it does it make sense? It always sounds a bit abstract. Um because we're talking about such small pieces. And I hope you can hear me because I can just hear myself in my head and I don't sound like myself. Um, Okay, I'm going to go back on solo and just quickly show you the different types. So we've got lots of mess. I think it's always a good drafting session and everything is really messy. Um, so, basically our front collar. So there you might want to have to do your shaping. Right? Basically, can you see, or you're fitting, we have done the dotted line there. That's where you might either cut it and open it up. So you can probably cut it and open it up or close it. I'm actually gonna cut these out quickly so I can show you on the last. Okay, 
So if we just put our blouses to, blouse together like that, so you can see at the front, it's going to look like this. So what you might then find, I mean, it's going to fold over like this. So what you might find, oh, that angle is too narrow, so I need to add to it. Or if it's too wide, you might want to close it on your towel. And somebody stolen my cellar tape. Um, and then at the same time at the back, it's exactly the same. So our back looks like here. So with the back, we might have to, have to again do some shaping into here. So we keep the same triangle as it is, but it will sort of fold over like this. This is sort of because the back will look like that. So it's sort of fold it over like a normal um, shirt collar. Um, so that angle, we know we have the joining edge is exactly the same length, so it will fit, but we just have to see where we have to make it longer again. So like a normal shirt collar, you can add cutting lines and open it or close it to fit you. Um, so you end up um, with basically the same construction as a shirt collar, but you have triangle pieces rather than your normal one collar piece. So we basically chopped the collar in half on the shoulder point and made it pointy. But the construction is exactly the same as a short shirt collar. So you stitch your, um, you cut um, four out of each, so two pairs, because we're chopping it up. So you got two um, top collars of this, so a pair of top collars of the front, a top, pair of top collars of the back, and a pair of under collars at the back, a pair of under collars at the front. And then you interface them if needed, depending on your fabric. I would probably do it because you get this nice pointy look. Um, you stitch it together at the shoulder, you stitch your bodices together at the shoulder. Then you stitch your outer edge together. So you end up with like a weird triangle. So you stitch it together like um, like this. We end up literally with a really bizarre shape like that. And then you stitch this edge onto your collar. And then you can basically sandwich your bodice and then um, Iron all the seam allowance on your under collar and then stitch in a ditch. Um, so just in the same line and co constructed like a shirt. And that's exactly how the original would have be constructed. Um, and I will put in Instagram, I share the pat pattern envelope I found. It's not a normal image, so I can't share it on. Well, iPad for some reason. But what I would actually think, what I think would be neater at the front is to sort of change it into a shawl collar or California collar, Cooper collar facing. Um, so I would actually at the front, which is this way around, which is why, can you see how with triangles, it's really easy to get confused when you're stitching. So you definitely need your, your notches, otherwise you can easily, at the back it's curved, so it's more obvious. But the front, I, I did it wrong um, just now. So always have your notches. At the front, you can actually extend your pattern piece for your top collar pair. So it's this shape. So it's the whole. So you could actually add your, you could end up with a really weird shape, sort of like a. Um, a tilted trunk. So this is like your facing shape. So it's like this. So it will give you a really nice run when you open. It makes it slightly softer rather than a really hard um, shirt collar construction. In that way, what you then do is you 
stitch your under collar onto the edge first. And the back, you can have a facing as well, just a little half moon facing um, or triangle facing. And then you, with your facing from your top collar, you just iron that flat and then you can just stitch along the line if you want to keep it in place. But that will give you a nicer, um, when you're wearing it, you won't get the this original collar. What well, they're not showing you, but what will happen is that you get a stitch line where it falls over. Um, and if you add a facing, you basically won't get that seam line. Um, you can have a stitch line, but you won't. But you can move the stitch line in a bit, um, but you won't get right at the folding point a seam, which can be. If you're very neat sewer, you can hide it perfectly well, but it it can be sort of a bit bulky. So it's nice sometimes to um, add a facing because it basically makes much easier. Anyway, this is the. Well, it's not quite 10 minutes, slightly longer. But this is the live drafting tutorial for the 1950s statement collar. I hope it all makes sense. Have you got any questions, anybody? Oh, yes. And if you're on Patreon, have a look. Um, if the Cooper collar from last week is very similar. Um, looks completely different, but you can use the same construction. You just basically just add... If I would describe this blouse as it's easiest, it's basically a basic one piece shirt collar or roll collar, just one piece. And all we're doing is we've added to, to a slightly wider v-neck and we slashed the shoulder and added the seam and add lots of volume so it goes up. Um, so it looks sort of quite statement and complicated and a little bit Cruella de Vil. Um, but it's actually much easier to construct when you would think it would be. Um, because I think whenever it sort of becomes sculptural or triangular, you think, ooh, it's a bit of putting. Um, but it's actually fairly straightforward. And as I showed you at the beginning, it's really easy to twirl to get that angle right at the front. But I, it looks like everything is quite clear. All made sense, which is always perfect. So in that case, thank you so much for joining me. And if you would like to know a bit more about this blouse and the Givenchy blouse, which is from that period, which is similar. Oh, that's a really awful image for the um, iPad. And um, which is slightly different. I've done a comparison on Instagram today and it's on my... It's on my feed now, so you can see how they both compare and how it have different constructions and whether it's a flounce or a gather. And um, that's it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And if you enjoyed it, please press the little like button and subscribe if you haven't. And next time I will schedule it at the correct time. But in general, if you haven't joined me before but would like to join me next time, it's always 8 p.m. UK time if I'm if I do one and it's normally Tuesdays or Saturdays, but not every week. So I will try to always let you more in advance. But that's it for me for tonight. And um, so thank you so much, Sharon, for joining me. Thank you, um, Janet. Thank you, Mrs. Cl Ms. Clark. And thank you, Amaris. It was lovely to have you. Oh, and Nicola. Sorry. Yes, if you just joined me, it's going to be now recorded. Um, but sorry to miss you. Oh, and... You're very welcome, Angelica. It was lovely to have you too. And if you, any of you see any nice images like Nicola, um, she found the beautiful 1940s dress we looked at last time. If you find any images, send, send them to me in the comments or on Instagram and I might make the next draft tutorial all about that. But that's it for me for tonight before my voice gives out completely. And I... I will try to shut you one in again for two weeks' time, but this time I I need to plan everything um, better. Oh, and Janet has one little question to finish off. So, what would Janet says? Um, what would you interface that collar with? And um, so, look at. It. Um, for the original, it's a 
the cut the cut the shirt itself was made out of a shirting column so quite a nice cotton collar so they would probably interface but in a thinner cotton in a sort of um topical light to medium weight sewn in interfacing or iron in facing so i would do something similar like that janet um if you wanted to make it stiffer you could also interline it this interface it with something like a like an organdy, which is like a cotton chiffon or something quite stiff, basically, but really lightweight. Um, organdy is quite expensive, but nice. But equally, if you get, you don't want something too thick or rigid, but you want something with, a, with enough body to get the pointy corners. So organdy will really work, work really well or like a um, lightweight interfacing. Um, but I would definitely interface it. Otherwise, it will be... Um, It'd be a bit too floppy. You don't want a floppy statement collar. Um, and yes, I see you in two weeks. And I'm glad you liked it, Kevin. And yes, Janet, I would um, I would love some sunshine as well. It is really cold over here. Um, yes, we have some sun, but not enough warm. Anyway, thank you so much, anybody, everybody, for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Or have a nice evening, if you like, Janet and me and Nicola in the UK. That's it for me to, for tonight. Bye-bye, everybody.